Alrighty, well, we might as well get started. Um, hey, folks, and yeah, welcome to another ACF Chat Fridays, which are our uh, open office hours for the ACF team to chat to anybody who wants to come along and ask questions and find out more about what we're doing. Uh, we run it every two weeks, and we do uh, record the session. We put it up on the uh, the WP Engine Builders YouTube channel, and we do a post on the blog as well. We, we do have a dedicated page where you can find um, the the registration link for next time and uh, where is it and any previous sessions that we've we've written about and posted the videos up so i'll just drop that link into chat this is another week of no specific topic of conversation which means it's open open floor um please use the q a if you want to type out a question you can use the chat as well if you don't see the q a button at the bottom zoom bar um, but yeah, as there's like just a handful of everyone, it, you're very welcome to unmute, you know, ask the question live uh, and we can we can go from there. And it'll be quite nice to see where the session takes us and we can have a conversation rather than uh, having to, you know, have questions. If you, if you don't have them, we can we can see what happens. Um, we are planning some more topic based sessions. I think we'd like in the next month or so to have uh, a special guest which will be Jason Baal who is the uh, maintainer, creator, founder, um, person behind WP GraphQL which is the WordPress plugin for uh, GraphQL so it's kind of uh, an alternative way of getting data from a WordPress site other than the REST API uh, and there's a lot of connection with WP GraphQL and ACF um, and it's quite a it's a tool that people use when they're building headless WordPress sites so we'll we hope to have him on in uh, the next couple of sessions. We'll we'll probably send an email out when we know exactly when that will be, and he can either show some demo of what um, how WP GraphQL works with ACF and take questions. And he's very very good to listen to and have uh, have do live demos and show some really cool stuff with WP GraphQL. So that'll be that'll be a good one, and hopefully hopefully a few more folks can come. Um, I think that's about it. I don't have any product updates at the moment. We are continuing working on ACF 6.3. Um, nothing in the works at the moment in terms of point releases. So yeah, let's let's start with you know open floor questions. Anything anyone wants to ask? Sue, did you get back to, uh, did you fix this generate press issue before? I think you you raised that two weeks ago. Um, did you contact them at all or did you find a workaround? I am still working on it. Thanks for asking. Um, I got sidetracked with another project, so I haven't gotten back to it, but it's still on the, on the front burner there. Nice. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for asking. Is your new project, is that ACF based as well? No, no. Gotcha. But it might be, you know, it's, it's a, it's a new, it's a new website. So I'm still kind of mulling things over and what I want to do with it. So yeah, it, it, it may get in there. What's your go-to way of building websites now? Is, is it generate press or are you another page builder or elemental? I mean, uh, the, the block editor? No, just generate press. Nice. Is is anyone on the call that builds now just with the block editor in mind, not a page builder, not kind of classic ACF? Are they is anybody going into full site editing? I'd take that as a bad sign. Well, not a bad sign, but yeah, a an indication of no. Um Interesting. Yeah, because we when we did the survey, the responses around like what type of sites people build, there's obviously a big chunk of people still building with classic WordPress, the classic editor, using ACF in the classic sense with themes that are the PHP themes. There's still a large amount of people using page builders. I don't know how I would class how would you class generate press? Is that a page builder? Does anyone use that other than Sue? Like is that something that 
does it just get you started rather than being a, a proper page builder? Yeah, I think generate press is actually a, is a theme. Yes. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, but it um, like I haven't looked into it much. I actually did look into it a bit when it came up uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, and I mean, without having used it, I think it it it's the sort of theme that kind of functions like a light page builder. Yeah, I could say it's a very flexible, very uh, sort of protean theme. Yeah, dynamic block elements is a very nice looking website. The Generate Press website actually. True. Mm -hmm. sure. Um, in other news, we do actually have uh, we have a tutorial that's going to be published soon for uh, how to use the options page feature, um, which is something that I think people have been waiting on for for quite a while. Um, and we also have a uh, new doc, new documentation for uh, the conditional logic settings, which I'm particularly excited about because it's um, it's one of those things that I think people may not use as much as they could because it it hasn't been terribly well documented. Uh, up until now and it's from what i understand it you can simply apply it in a lot more ways than you used to be able to yeah and it's a bit more because since we've done the the 6.0 ui refresh where we've we've split up some of the settings per fields into different tabs because this is conditional logic for fields rather than the location rules of the field group um yes. but the the conditional logic is now behind its own tab um so it's sort of separated it out and you can turn it on and and control more things and we are looking to uh, improve those conditional logic issues if you're using taxonomies um, where you, you might want to uh, display a certain field because a taxonomy field can, is has selected a certain term. But at the moment, you can't select those terms. You have to like know the ID of the term and use either greater than or equals to. And, and it's just really not very user-friendly. Um, we were hoping to get that fixed into one of the earlier... Um, major versions that we've done this year, but we just, yeah, we, we didn't get around to it. So it's kind of been punted down the road a little bit. I'm I'm hoping we might get that in 6.3, but it's, I think it's one of these things that you look at and you think, oh, that would be easy to fix, but actually there's a little bit more behind it. And there's probably the, the, the way we need to fix it is something that we've not had to do in conditional logic before, because you might have to load, you literally would have to load all of the terms for a taxonomy and that might be, like hundreds and so we have to kind of make it scalable and load stuff asynchronously and yeah but that that would be a nice fix to conditional logic and it would be good to update that doc when we have it as well yeah for sure um i was gonna say Yeah, in terms of updates, I mean, we're talking about the block editor, and doesn't seem sound like it's it's a major um, part of people's site builds on on the call anyway. Um, but we, you know, ACF six point three has uh, a number of big improvements to our ACF blocks feature, which is I, I kind of probably should do mini recaps in in case people don't know, but ACF blocks is our one of our premium features that is in ACF Pro. And it is a very, very simple way of creating custom blocks for the block editor. So if your clients or your users want to use the block editor for editing their content or pages or custom post types, uh, and you need something that's a little bit more than just the native blocks in, Word, in WordPress in the block editor, like the paragraph, the image or whatever, you might want a, a section that you control, uh, but you might need user input for that section, then custom blocks with ACF blocks is really easy because you effectively create a field group in ACF and say, right, well, this might be this might be the field group for my block that I want to be the hero block, and I want you know users to add that to pages where they want it and maybe reorder it. But in that hero block, I want a title, I want a secondary paragraph, and I want an image that might appear on the right or whatever. So that's that's where you use ACF blocks, and you can create the field group and define those three fields as you would do that um, somebody will then, content editors will edit, and then you define a block and tie it to that field group. Um, and then suddenly when you go to the block editor, you now have a new block that your content editors can go and add to the page and it's the hero block and they have in the sidebar 
or sometimes in the in the main preview um they have those fields that they can fill in and they can put the header in the the image select the image and put the paragraph in so it's kind of it's our acf's bridge to the new block editor well, i say new the block editor that's been around for a while now but it's, it feels new in wordpress still um rather than the older way of doing things with wordpress and the classic editor and creating adding f custom fields to a poster or a custom post type and then outputting those fields in your php template for that uh for that page or single post so yeah that's 6.3 uh, we've got some three major majorish updates to that so there's a there's a piece around fixing block field validation as you you know with acf fields as normal when you um you want your users to fill out data you can set those fields as required and you can do other types of validation if it's a number field you can set minimum maximum um you can you know, make sure things have to be selected uh, if they've got choices but if you've created an acf block with fields that require validation historically that validation does not do any checks when the user adds the blog at uh, the block and then maybe tries to save the post because WordPress, the block editor makes it quite hard for us to, to, to do that implementation, but that's something we're addressing in six, three. So um, yeah, people who have previously been frustrated because their editors create stuff and save pages without actually filling in the data they require them to in blocks that will be fixed. Um, and we've got another uh, feature that's well, this is kind of new. So when you create an ACF block and the block is added to the, the content in the content editor, that data around those fields that are in that block gets saved to the post content uh, as a kind of a strange structure. However, WordPress saves all of the block editor information into, into uh, the post content column in the post table kind of like so it's backwards compatible when if you ever use the classic editor um but there are some people that want to use acf blocks and they want to store field data from their users but actually store that in post meta like with classic acf fields so we're, we're working on the ability to be able to say you're creating this block you've got this field group and it's got this these five fields for example and toggle on uh a setting that says save it in post meta and then it's easy to query, it's easy to sort, it's easy to use in uh, like WP query, um, custom queries, and you can access the data much easier than having to kind of get it from the weird blob of data that gets saved to do, um, the post content. And we've we've got another feature that isn't that isn't major, but it's going to help headless users if they're creating front end components to output their block in their front end um, front end application or front end website they can use that same component in the editor instead of having to create a PHP template because blocks are basically two files, a block.json, which is the WordPress language to configure a block. And we use the same um, setup and a PHP template file, which is, which is what's rendered on the output. But if you're doing sort of headless stuff and you're using other front end components, you might not want to create a PHP template for it. So we're giving people the opportunity to, reuse their front end component and i think that's that's it for six three from from a blocks perspective but it will hopefully might have the conditional logic stuff we'll see no promises and some some other bits um that will be working on fixing long-term bugs and in the absence of any other uh any anybody else speaking what please drop in the chat or or speak up what bugs or things that are irking you currently about ACF that you just think, oh, I cannot believe they haven't fixed this by now. Like raise that to the top of our uh, awareness and we can see what we can do. Is there anything that you come across? Please don't say it's perfect because we know it's not. We've got a backlog of lots of things, but we can't always, you know, get everything done in a timely manner. It's perfect. <laughs> Thanks, Anne. <laughs> Well, I'm just going to throw in a two cents, but because I'm not the expert on ACF, I've been using it for a while. But as a meetup organizer for help desks for WordPress and part of a peer group that uh, runs a whole bunch of WordPress meetups, 
I think one of the things that's an issue is that in order to really use ACF, you got to drop into developer mode, which means that you you're not available to the general public for using ACF because most people are not going to do code. Uh, even with a theme like generate press, generate press is power is its elements feature, which isn't really a page builder, but it, it's a, it's a way to integrate and create head headers and footers and it has hooks. So you can build hooks and you can build blocks and drop those blocks in as a hook. Uh, so it's a very powerful theme, but still getting ACF fields integrated into the system, it's tough. It, it's not easy. If you use generate blocks, which does integrate a bit with uh, ACF, uh, you can work with that. And it's still, it's not the easiest thing, but it can be done. But when you talk about, you know, building your own blocks, theme.json, you know, you automatically just exclude a huge portion of of people who are WordPress. WordPress in itself is tough to get started in, but uh, so, you know, yeah, maybe it's just a developer tool and that's the way you see yourself. But uh, I see one of the issues for like theme.json, there's no GUI interface to to modify it. There's no, uh, and, and uh, you know, that's a cop out in a certain sense that, oh, I got to do a GUI. But th this is the reality. You talk about the block editor. There's surveys out that say roughly full site editing themes. They're like, I think the highest one I've seen is 7% of the of WordPress users. 7%. Yeah. You know, and so with WordPress powering all this energy into this new block stuff, it's, you know, it's like, it's... Yeah, it's good, but on the other hand, it's it's like you say, it's still brand new. Every time, every time there's a new release, it's brand new, and it's it's clunky. Uh, so it's it's hard to get people to adopt stuff that makes their workflow harder. And I know you can do things with a block theme that you couldn't do with other stuff, and it's it's getting there, but it's a clunky workflow. And I, I think I've probably said too much already, but. No, that, that's a really good insight, Eagle, because like we we do hear differing things from people because you know, over the last few releases where we've done things like putting UIs on top of custom post type generation, putting UIs on top of the options page feature, which was only previously you had to use PHP code to do that. We've right. had a lot of people that say, Oh, you're forgetting about the developer. You're making this too no code, you're making this too user friendly. There's gonna be too many like users using it rather than <laughs> Uh, and, and, you know, what you've just said is kind of the opposite of that, but well, it's a really good point. Sorry. There, there's an interim sp spot, you know, it's like, there's, there's a whole bunch of uneducated users out there. There's, there's a huge number and that, and that keeps our help desk uh, meetups going. Uh, and there are developers that love to drop in code, but there's a, a, a big chunk of the market that aren't really developers. They can they can work with the code a little bit, but they're basically configurators. Yeah, right? the site assemblers, and, the people. And a lot are, of these are the people that are building websites right now. And yeah. so um, a lot of them want to use ACF, but how in the world do I get those fields into my page or into my post? You know, that's the struggle. Yeah. And I hear it a lot. Yeah, I think um, there's a couple of things there because what we were just talking about creating ACF blocks. With, and I said, it's a it's a block.json file and it's a PHP template file. And yes, granted, that is coding. However, we are looking for uh, when to introduce a UI for block creation because it's a big part of, of the Pro plugin. Uh, and it is a bit of a barrier to entry, uh, basically, as you've just described. Um, it's not going to be something we'll do in 6.3, but there will be at some point, hopefully, a UI that, it just allows people to, to configure a block and say, right, well, I want this block to have these fields and I want it to uh, use these settings and this, but don't ever need to touch uh, their editor to create a JSON file or, you know, they might have to go and create the render for the PHP file, but that's part of theme templating, I guess. Um, so that's, that's something we are looking at and that will hopefully remove some barriers to creating blocks. Uh, 
and the other thing you just talked about about you know, how to display fields yeah it's a tricky one because acf historically has always been a front-end agnostic developer tool that says we allow you to create the fields your content editors then can populate those fields however you go and grab that field data is up to you we'll give you like the low level functionality the function get field the field or whatever those those functions to go and get the fields but we've i say we acf has never just said right well let's go and create a a really handy kind of front end component that might display every field type in the way that it should be like a repeater in a table or anything like that and I'm I'm a bit on the fence about if we should do that or whether or not people are just so used to getting the data. That being said, in the block editor now, we do need to at least have a block that says, go and output this field value for this this field key and, and go and use it somewhere. And we are also looking at how do we surface field data and sort of in line within the block editor. So for example, you've got a paragraph block and you are writing a post about a product. You might want to actually use that product price, which is in post meta or something, inside the paragraph rather than having to go and get a block that just says, render me the output of this uh, meta field. And that has to sit alongside the paragraph. This will be like in line, like almost like a short code effectively, but something that works very natively and nicely within the wordpress block editor um but I th yeah so that's that's probably where we're currently at with how to surface data in the in uh, the block editor but i don't know whether or not we'll go much further to give people more tools to 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 create the front end things there are like, other plugins in the community i think there's something called acf views which puts m more but it, it gives you the, the tools to display stuff on the front end um but i yeah I, I i take your point and there's there's obviously users who are they're getting started and then once they've created the fields and edited the fields they just think well now what how do i you know where do i go exactly from here? exactly yes yeah and you know and i'm not saying yay or nay in terms of which direction i'm just raising it as an issue i hear uh as an organizer for help desk wordpress that you know there yeah. aren't a lot of people asking questions in the help desk these days uh about full site editing it comes up but it's not it's not a huge part of the help desk circuit uh there there's just just not there's not a lot of people using them yet yeah so it's yeah, still yeah. it's still the uh classic and the hybrid themes i guess but more classic still yeah generate exactly. press and astro are huge cadence is huge um the themes um elementors you know the the monster in the room bricks builder is coming on strong and bricks builder does integrate with acf so that's yeah they make they make it pretty easy to use acf so just making some notes because I need to. I need to really do a good. We could do. We could definitely do a bit of a dive into the on the blog, Mike, around like what are the 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 builder type themes that are out there that and how they work with ACF and how like Eagle, mm -hmm. you just run them down like the Cadence, the Astras, the Generate Press, and and do some kind of at least some content rather than documentation about how you can use ACF with them because um, that's. Yeah. You didn't it's, seem to know generate theme, generate press theme. Uh, have you ever talked to the to the developer Tom Bresney? No, he, no. He's an amazing guy. You you should talk to him about how how he's implementing ACF in his his bl generate blocks. Yeah. Um, the the developer for Bricks is another awesome uh, developer, uh, and like I say his his Bricks builder theme does integrate uh acf so again it, it's that's a conversation i think <clears throat> should happen at, uh, uh, that uh i don't know where you guys are doing a great job but there's these other amazing developers out there that might have some feedback that aren't going to show up in this meetup you know here yeah yeah that's a good call i mean we do we kind of 
we have a very wide ecosystem of ACF add-ons and ACF plugins and other True. plugins that integrate with, and we do, you know, we're, we're still quite a relatively small team and we do the best, I guess we can with the integrations with things like Elementor, WPML. We had those guys on the plugin, uh, sorry, on the, uh, on the session a couple of times ago around how WPML and ACF work together for translating. And, you know, we, right or wrongly, we've just focused on the biggest at the moment. Um, and Elementor, as you say, the monster in the room, WPML is pretty huge as well. But yeah, no, it's a good, it's a good shout. And I'm just making notes. Right, here I understand. And, uh, yeah. but, you know, note, note to the wise, Bricks is coming on like gangbusters. Uh, a lot of the people, I mean, one of the guys that's in our meetup group, peer group that shows up, you know, he's been Elementor for years. He runs an Elementor meetup and he's like, uh, I've had it. And he's now working with Bricks because Elementor just frustrates him so badly that he, uh, he's dumb ship. And I see that in the, uh, the Facebook groups at, at, at the admin bar, uh, even in the grid pane in the discussion uh, you know, people are bricks is coming on strong. So yeah, it, it may not it, be the biggest in the room, but I think right now they're the best builder out there. Yeah, it's interesting as well because we we obviously wrapped up the ACF survey not that long ago, and there's a hang on, where is that? I'm just going to link directly to. Oh it. yeah, where did they where did they fall in the bricks picture? came third, like oh wow, in the, in the number of I can't deep link to it, but the there is a table of all of the results. Um. I don't know why that's not created an ID for it, weirdly. But um, yeah, they came third after Elemental, Divi, and then Bricks. And I think it was one of those ones where we we scout, we had the choices that we pre-populated. I think Bricks was there, but we also gave people an, an, a way to say other. And we, yeah. Mike scoured all of those other ones, and Bricks was appearing in like, oh, sometimes Elemental, but more likely Bricks now. And it, it's, it was reflecting what you're saying in terms it, of that it's a, It's becoming a... a if not a tsunami it's getting there it's a huge wave of, of people realizing that what what bricks creates very clean html code and the other developer out there that's uh, always interesting to listen to and work with is kevin geary and he's he's definitely on the bricks bandwagon because of his thing is all about the html dom structure and yeah. clean code and accessibility and He's telling everybody in the world that Bricks is Bricks is number one for that right now. So, and it's worth mentioning. I, I was talking to the the folks from Divi uh, at WordCamp US. They're moving entirely to blocks now. So I, I don't know if they've already launched that, but they not they yet alpha on that and said they're they're going to convert all of their modules to blocks. So block block editing blocks, rather yeah. Oh wow, how, rather how, than how, rather than short work? code. Because yeah. currently they have every every layout is a short code or every piece is a short code and it's short codes within short codes. And it's yeah, it's a mess. pretty chaotic. Um, but they're moving over to uh, being just block based entirely. And I, I I don't know how they're doing. I would imagine it, that their ramp would be like do it with dynamic blocks that are like PHP based. Uh, and then Which just is similar to us, I guess. Isn't it? Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of what I see them doing. But um, yeah, it's, I it's, it's also about. freaking out the Divi world. Because the Divi world's afraid that, that version five is going to leave everybody. What's so funny though is when I heard that, I was like, "Oh, cool! I don't. I'm not writing off Divi now. Like that's perfect. That's that's they're they're securing their future. That's good. So it'll be interesting it'll be to see how block uh, or page builders uh, adapt to blocks in the future. Yeah, it will be. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna go away and do a bit more research in my, probably in my spare time about the bricks and stuff i i was speaking to somebody who uh they were i think that the company is behind them that does the oxygen but they've the, the founder has started break dance which is a yeah. yeah a whole new thing and the guy that i was speaking to is like a site developer and he was raving about break dance really enjoying it um so there are these kind of new things that are popping up and growing but i think the problem with yeah. breakdance is if if you create if you're already a company that creates a page builder like oxygen and then you create something called breakdance what does that mean for the customers of like it's it feels a bit like the wp bakery visual composer confusion all over again <laughs> which uh, i still uh, don't know what happened with that a lot of the oxygen folks uh, are are one of the one of the waves of the bricks because they just 
they felt abandoned. And so a lot of those people in the groups are like, we're moving to Briggs. Um, and from what I hear, break dances. Oh, it's cool. It's sweet. It's like, it's like elementary, but it creates crap code, right? The HTML yeah. structure and accessibility. Um, I can't say that for sure, but that's what I hear in the discussions that the, the code is just crap. So yeah. is the Facebook groups and stuff you're in, are you, are you in things like, is it the dynamic WordPress group? Is that the one that's uh, run by, is it advanced it? WordPress or David. something like that? I yeah. haven't been on there. In so yeah, long. where are you hanging out, Eagle? Where, yeah, where should we be hanging out here <laughs> if, if we're not already. Uh, well, I think the biggest group out there right now is the admin bar. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, they did a good survey. Yeah. Well, and and the group itself is is pretty high level, and it's it's got a bunch of active admins. So <clears throat> there's they keep it clean and cool and they discuss a lot of things, including how to run a business, but I, uh, you know, you, you see discussions of block editor themes, uh, people ask a question and it, and, and it gets into huge discussions about that element of something, uh, and all pretty high level. Um, I'm a grid pane user as well as a WP engine hosting. So there's a lot of discussion in there. The Kevin Geary, um, uh, has his own, it's not on Facebook. It's on his own circle. He has his own uh, community going. And so there's a lot of discussion in there. Um, so, uh, but I think the admin bar is the best group going right now on Facebook. Nice. Yeah. That's, that's really helpful. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. 8.3. Yeah. Oh, and the bricks, the bricks group too, of course. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, hang out there. That's a very good group. Very helpful people. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have a look at Bricks and and see advanced see. advanced WordPress group is it's sometimes pretty good, but it's it's huge and yeah, it's there's a lot a of what where where to host things. What's the best plugin? You know that kind yeah, of conversation. You, which a lot of that. you don't get that too much in the admin bar. Uh, the questions are better thought out and better responded to yeah but anyway i appreciate your letting me speak <laughs> oh no i i, I was you, needing somebody to yeah to stop me from out. speaking so yeah it's nice to have a, a good chat about stuff and it is yeah. i mean it's, it's helpful just to hear like you know we do, I do turn up to these sessions with the Q&A and sort of say, you know, what issues have you got with ACF? What what do you need help with? What, you know, blah, blah, blah. But actually just hearing individual viewpoints on the state of WordPress, the state of ACF, where you think there are issues like this. This is really good like discussion to to have sparked and, and, and get feedback from. Well, I mean, I don't know if you've seen the theme, the Ollie theme yet. Oh, yeah, Mike uh, McAllister, yeah. Yeah, uh, apparently uh, they're... <laughs> having struggles trying to get it into the repository. And yeah. I just saw a post from him saying that, yeah, maybe this isn't where we want to put it, you know, but it's like, that's probably one of the most powerful onboarding themes I've seen so far in terms of full site editing. And that, that it, it's, you just don't dump it on a new user and say, Oh, good luck. Yeah. You know, I, uh, it, it's an I instructional. They're not letting him in in there because there's some some theme guidelines that along the way have been written to be like you should not do this. It must be in a plugin. There can't be any wizard like you know setup or site site population functionality in the theme. Like very yeah. you know dogmatic. It should not belong belong in a theme. And then they are using that to then say to him no. But surely the Ollie theme would be a, a great kind of example of full site editing. And, and that would be the, it would help exposure of it. But yeah. I think if that were the default theme, a lot more people will adopt uh, yeah. WordPress than just dumping 2023 or well, on, on people. Yeah. It's with like, the hello world post kind of thing. Yeah. That, and then like the experimentation side of it, there was, there was some recommendations like that, that Mike should have done a proposal, but it's like, well, how, how do you do a proposal if you've got no, like, proof of concept or something that actually proves what your proposal is doing so he built the functionality for his plugins or for his theme specifically 
and and like if this was its own plugin it probably wouldn't get approved because it has a dependency on the theme doesn't it like so it, yeah. it would have to be a general onboarding which then he has to assume every theme instance and it's just like let people experiment especially if it's like logic that will go away in the future if full site editing if the site editor is better in the future he'll just remove the wizard right so it's temporary logic it's yeah. not a plugin <laughs> yeah I've been having a furious conversations about this all morning. <laughs> yeah, it's a shame that it's not a, I don't know, like sometimes I think auto, well, I can say automatic. Sometimes I think the WordPress project is going in the right direction from a product point of view. Like they hired a guy called Rich Tabor last year. Yeah, and really. like he's really good at things that, you know, you should be thinking, they should be thinking about from a block editing perspective. And that that's, really comforting to know that he's involved and nick diego who's came from wp engine is a you know devrel advocate for the wordpress now but like yeah. mike should be welcomed with open arms they should be sort of saying to him well come and do like as you say the default theme like that should be the on the other in. side of it though i i do see that like okay the, the theme reviewers having to switch into plug-in review mode is is a thing like it it, it is extra burden on the team from a but, code perspective but, I guess, yeah yeah but then if you like think about also themes are no longer just a bunch of php like they're site editing themes so we've throttled back on the amount of logic and things that need to be checked and so if there's a little extra to review there then like i don't know if it's it's as big of a deal i do understand the human impact on it but at the yeah. same time, it's like Come on, WordPress can't simple. be that can't be that boxed in. I mean, you know, sure, there's rules, but there should be there are smart enough people on the word team um, group that could look at that and go, "This is freaking awesome! This should be, you know, maybe it breaks a couple of rules, but so yeah, the, what? The adoption benefit from it would be, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, hello." We're seven percent, and that's where WordPress is going. And you can't get better than that after what is it, two three years? That's a very slow adoption. Yeah, but uh, whatever. Yeah, we'll see. I I don't think Mike's gonna have any problem getting uh, folks to use his theme, even if he self distributes. So I, I that was like, as a human, well, I want the help to desk. See, the help desk know? groups are gonna <laughs> pump him. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, yeah, we're going to recommend this team, yeah, because it helps people get on board, and that's what it's about. But it's like people ask about ACL uh, full site editing right now. Uh, at least in my meetups, we recommend Ollie because it gets you started. You know, Ollie yeah. Frost, you know, number of themes, um, but not twenty twenty three. Hello, <laughs> no. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's so true. Well, nice, nice plug for Frost as well. We can drop that link in the, uh, in the uh, the show notes, because that is yeah, that was our very own Brian Gardner. Yeah, no, look at the struggle he had to do to get into Frost to the repository. He, he, that that was, took yeah. a while. I didn't catch that. I don't. I wasn't familiar with that. Yeah, yeah, he he struggled for a little while. He because oh. we talk about Frost a lot in the uh, uh, build mode group, which is next. Oh, yes. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I'm using Frost on one of my sites, one of my main sites. I love it. A lot of people are. It's, um, yeah, yeah. it's really nice looking. He did a great job. And he does a, he does a, you know, documentation on here. Here's my Frost thing and here's how to fork it and make it your own. And, you know, you change it. Here's, here's how you edit the theme.json. Here's, you know, he does a lot of support work on the, around the fringes not just putting the theme out there yeah that's quite nice it, i mean it's nice but it's also important so you don't get a, a ton of sites that just all look the same the kind of the bootstrap um problem like if, if if there's so many now wordpress sites that just look exactly the same but the ability to customize and the fact that it's encouraged and documented is, is brilliant right I always laugh at those AI demos where they're like, I'm going to show you a picture of this website and build it for me. And it's always the same layout as like every other website. So it's like, of course, it's going to know how to build that. It's like the same <laughs> template. <laughs> yeah, of course. 
Right, well, we are a couple of minutes from the end, so unless anyone's got any burning questions, um, we will wrap it up. But that's that's been a it's been a nice session. It's been different. It's been good. I appreciate Eagle, your um, you stepping up and chatting. That's definitely sparked some interesting things. And yeah, I have a hard time keeping my mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're fine. It's totally welcome today, honestly. All right, thanks. Um, but yeah, we will be back in a couple of weeks as normal and. Uh, if you're not subscribed to the email uh, list, there is a because we will hopefully be emailing the list when we know what when the Jason Bar WP GraphQL session will be. It's if you're not on the email list, it's at the bottom of the footer on the Advanced Castle Fields site. Uh, and if not, yeah, we will see you next time. Thanks for turning up, folks. Have a good Question, weekend. When 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 does the oh. uh, chat Fridays get updated for the next uh, session? I'll do it just just straight after this. I'll create the new Zoom link and put it on the header of the Chat Fridays page straight away. Okay, great. Thanks. Nice. Cool. See you then. All right. See you later, folks. Thank Bye. you. See you. Bye.